So here are the top 10 ways, with no particular order, on how to balance your estrogen. Number one, avoid plastic. This is an estrogen disruptor of all disruptors. And I know I said in no particular order, but this is huge. If you at any point in your life are being exposed to BPA or its analogs, any of the BPs, plastic bottles, canned foods, dental sealants, they're found in unfiltered water, they're found in thermal paper, then you know it's acting like a xenoestrogen in the body. And not only binding to estrogen receptors to various tissues in the body, but blocking the binding of other healthy hormones. All right, knowledge bomb, top 10 ways to balance your estrogen. Check this out. The two sex hormones that are most under stress in today's day and age are testosterone and estrogen. Both men and women have estrogen, we know this, but I wanna focus on estrogen, right? Women have more, men have less. Estrogen regulates growth, development, and physiology of the human reproductive system. It's a super important hormone that's produced primarily through the ovaries, premenopausally, and postmenopausally from the adrenal androgens. Estrogen binds to target organs and exerts its physiological effect. And at a healthy physiological level, it's a potent anti-inflammatory hormone. But what we're seeing in younger populations is an excess of this hormone. Too much estrogen for men, too much estrogen for women. And the downstream effects of this can be detrimental. In men, we see erectile dysfunction. According to some studies, erectile dysfunction affects 8% of men aged 20 to 29 and 11% of those aged 30 to 39. It's a big issue that's growing or not growing. Gynecomastia, feminization, and infertility are big issues that we see in men too. In women, what are some of the things that we see when it comes to high amounts of estrogen? Acne, dysmenorrhea, that means painful periods, painful cramps, Bloating, I just did a show on this talking about why. Go back to that episode, but bloating can be caused by high amounts of estrogen. Menorrhagia, that means heavy, heavy bleeds. Mood swings, more irritability with everything and anyone. It's just bothering you. Sleep disruptions, swelling throughout the body. How many of you are suffering with cold hands and feet? How many of you are suffering with low sex drive? Tender breast, cyst in the breast, fibroids in the uterus, that's because of high estrogen and weight gain. So high estrogen in men and women are predispositions to various diseases like thyroid disease, heart disease, stroke, breast and ovarian cancer. So naturally we question, why is it so high? Well, many different reasons, but I'm gonna go into them in the top 10. So here are the top 10 ways in no particular order how to balance your estrogen. Now it's really important to understand the way estrogen reacts in the body is largely determined by the way it's metabolized. How is it broken down in the body? Estrogen is broken down in the liver through phase one, hydroxylation, and phase two, methylation and glucuronidation pathways. This allows estrogen to detox in the body and leave, right? You don't want estrogen hanging around. It's going to be a problem. After the phase one, three types of estrogen are produced, 2, 4, and 16 OH. In healthier people with healthier metabolism, they have about 60 to 80% 2 OH, 7.5 to 11% 4 OH, and 13 to 30% 16 OH. Now here's the thing, you want more 2 OH estrogen breakdown product because it has a weak estrogenic effect on the body. The four and the 16 are problems, especially if you have them in higher levels in proportion because they have continuous estrogen activity in the body. And this is something that you don't want. See, when I was in practice for my breast cancer patients, I ran this Dutch test and it illustrated the personalized breakdown of these percentages. And for all my breast cancer patients, I immediately went to the 4 and 16 OH breakdown products. And inevitably, they were always high for these folks. And that's because these estrogen breakdown products assert a higher level of genetic mutation and a higher level of breast cancer. Now for phase two, this is a really important part of estrogen breakdown. This makes all estrogens less damaging in the body. And it's super important because this pathway reduces the potential for biological damage. So I say this because it's important to optimize this process. The way that estrogen reacts in the body is the way that it's broken down. If you're able to facilitate a healthy breakdown of estrogen metabolism in the body, then it stands to believe that you're going to have a healthier balanced estrogen overall. So here are the top 10 ways, with no particular order, on how to balance your estrogen. Number one, avoid plastic. This is an estrogen disruptor of all disruptors. And I know I said in no particular order, but this is huge. If you at any point in your life are being exposed to BPA or its analogs, any of the BPs, plastic bottles, canned foods, dental sealants, they're found in unfiltered water, they're found in thermal paper, then you know it's acting like a xenoestrogen in the body. And not only binding to estrogen receptors to various tissues in the body, but blocking the binding of other healthy hormones. You are also going to find it in cosmetics, makeup, synthetic fragrances, materials in the home that are off-gassing, cleaning supplies, hormone disruptors, you wanna cut out the plastic. I don't mean to overwhelm you. 
I just want to bring awareness. Number two, pooping. If you are not regularly moving your bowels and you are predisposing yourself to excess estrogen, constipation is the disruptor of healthy estrogen metabolism, right? The microbes in your estrobilum, right? That is a collection of bacteria in your gut with the capability to metabolize estrogen. They help you break down estrogen. They produce an enzyme in your gut called beta-glucuronidase. It helps deconjugate estrogen into its active form. When the gut microbiome is healthy, this collection of bacteria produces a balanced amount of this enzyme. But with dysbiosis, when you have gut issues and the constipation is continuing, this enzyme activity can be altered and can begin recirculating unhealthy amounts of estrogen in the body. Number three, stress, a major disruptor. Stress will disrupt your estrogen levels. How? Well, when you have chronically high levels of cortisol, you're imbalancing all other hormones because cortisol is a depleter of your overall health long term. You want cortisol high acutely, but what happens is when you have prolonged stress, all of your hormones begin to suffer. So your estrogen may be high initially, but then it begins to deplete and deplete and deplete. Stress is if not number one, I say it as number three in no particular order, but it's really, really important. You have to have a technique to help balance your stress every single day. Everyone in American society needs to know that prolonged chronic stress is going to affect your hormones, whether it's testosterone, estrogen, progesterone. I say it as a broad thing, but you really got to handle your stress. Number four, alcohol is such, such a powerful disruptor of your hormones. Why? Alcohol is a stress on the liver. Where is estrogen metabolized? in the liver. So it's so, so important to understand as your inflammation goes up, so too does your stress. If your stress hormones go up, your estrogen is affected. On top of that, that high amount of estrogen that many of us in America, just by being exposed to plastics and all these environmental toxins, are predisposing ourselves to having elevated amounts, our liver is then compromised by alcohol. If you are drinking alcohol, stay away from beer because that is the most estrogenic for men and women. All right. Number five, fitness, very important. Why? Obesity. Your adipose cells release an enzyme that helps liberate or create more estrogen in the body. So the more adipose, so the more fat you have, the more your estrogen levels are going to be elevated. So very important. On top of that, fitness is very important for detoxification of those hormones. It's going to activate the liver and activate clearance of these hormones. And on top of that, moving is going to get you pooping. So really important. Get your fitness going. Sleep. So, so important. This, this is where our hormones are restored and rejuvenated. This is where they're balanced. Very, very important to understand. When your cortisol is down, when you're going to sleep, this is when your melatonin is going up and it's exerting a healing effect on the body. This healing effect is upstream and downstream. The benefit is the next day, your hormones are in a better place to be released. So really, really important. That remember, your body works in rhythms. So normal rhythms are going to be releasing your hormones at normal healthy levels if you're taking all of these precautions together. Number seven, blood sugar. Insulin and hormones are tightly bound. Insulin in itself is a hormone, but your sex hormones are tightly bound. The more that you're eating a crappy diet, increasing inflammation in the body, increasing the need for more and more insulin, you develop insulin insensitivity, and that is a downstream issue because what's happening is when you're having an inflamed state with high amounts of sugar, one of the first hormones to be affected is estrogen. So make sure you're eating a healthy, whole food, balanced, fiber-rich diet to help your gut microbiome accommodate the breakdown of those estrogen byproducts. Very, very important, making sure your blood sugar is in check. Number eight, I just mentioned foods. I just mentioned fiber, cruciferous vegetables, super important. Why? These are sulfur-rich foods that help support liver metabolism and get the signals to get the detox revved up in the body. Indole 3 carbonyl is found in these foods and it stimulates detoxification enzymes and thus we promote a healthy hormone detox. Of note, you may have heard before, it's best to eat raw. Many of us can't eat raw, including me, so here's a little hack I'm gonna give you on a side note. A little hack to eat your broccoli or whatever cruciferous vegetables. If you steam cook broccoli for six minutes on medium, you will greatly affect this enzyme, myrosinase, that is going to help create those byproducts to help break down estrogen. That produces the indole 3 carbonyl that I just spoke about. 50% is gonna be gone. So after cooking, what you can do is replenish your broccoli or cauliflower, you may have heard of this before, by adding raw mustard seed powder. This is going to help rebalance 
and reactivate that enzyme that is going to produce the indole-3-carbonyl for you to break down estrogen. One of the most powerful cruciferous vegetables to help break down or help for detoxification, and I've seen this clinically help uh, just as the only intervention taken from test to test for better estrogen metabolism is broccoli sprouts. If you go and get broccoli sprouts, have some broccoli sprouts, add them in with tahini, a little salt, a little olive oil, you'll be doing your hormones a really, really good favor. Number nine, man, minerals and vitamins. Magnesium is one of the most important minerals for estrogen metabolism. During the methylation phase, the last step at rendering estrogen less toxic, magnesium plays a major role in both phase one and phase two. 50 to 75% of us don't get enough magnesium. What is the other most important vitamin for estrogen metabolism? B vitamins, especially B2, B6, and B12. It's needed for phase one and phase two metabolism of estrogen to work properly. These are called cofactors, and they're needed for each step in estrogen metabolism to happen. B vitamins and magnesium are in almost every single step for healthy estrogen metabolism. So go get a NutraVal done. You can get it from a functional doctor or a naturopathic doctor. You can see right in front of you what your magnesium and B vitamin levels look like. And if they're really low, either or or both, you can write down all of the B vitamin rich foods and start incorporating those. Write down all the magnesium rich foods and start incorporating those. And ask your doctor if supplementing is a good thing. If so, start a supplement regimen. For magnesium, one of the nice little hacks is taking an Epsom salt bath. Actually very helpful for estrogen detox. Okay, number 10, avoid hormone replacement therapy. And I'll bring into the awareness, birth control is something that can really affect your hormones. For many people, their estrogen goes way up when they're on birth control. So pay attention because these two medications can really, really disrupt your hormones. When it comes to informed consent, you should first read about what are all the predispositions when taking these medications because both of them increase your risk for breast cancer, uterine cancer. So very, very important to understand what is the cost benefit. In the near future, I'll be doing a whole show on birth control to really highlight all of these important points before you take it so you have all the informed consent to make the decision that you want to. All right, so I have two bonuses right here. I didn't want, I couldn't stop at 10. Uh, pesticides and herbicides, pay close attention because a lot of pesticides and herbicides not only affect your immune system, not only cause inflammation, but affect your hormones and are estrogenic to the body. If you can grow a garden with your own food, do that. That's one of the best things you can do for yourself. Just make sure you're very much so aware, okay, is this piece of broccoli or is this spinach organic or not? And a last little bonus here are supplements, of course, one of my favorite. They can really help balance your estrogen. Here are some supplements and herbs that I like. Chase tree, B6, vitamin E, phytoestrogen-rich food, glutathione, NAC, DIM, calcium deglucurate, fiber, and gut supportive protocols. Each one of these targets a different part of the estrogen pathway, so it's important to understand what you need by talking to a professional. Don't just go and take supplements, but if you do, go to SwellScore. We got the best ones out there. All right, all the love to you. If you have high amounts of estrogen, if any of this resonated with you and you found that you have any of these symptoms, very, very important to talk to your doctor, look into it, get your test, take a Dutch test, see visually where you stand, see if you're breaking down estrogen. And if you are, what are the percentages of each of the breakdown products, right? You don't want those toxic 4 and 16 OH estrogens to be really high and the two really low. So make sure that you're following your health to the highest level and seeing what you need to do, and then follow these top 10. I promise you, your estrogen is gonna be balanced in the best of ways. 